The next splint I want to show is the boxer. That's the ulnar gutter splint. Indication for this would be a fourth or fifth metacarpal fracture. What size do we need? I like to determine it with a three inch elastic bandage coming around the fourth and fifth at the PIP joint. Now if your bandage touches all the way around the fourth, three inch is fine. If it doesn't touch, you size up to four inch. But three will be fine for this patient. Okay. The length will be from the end of the fifth, and again, two inches distal from the anticubital space. Okay, getting this measurement. Now I tend again to use elastic bandage. I just don't stretch it. Come to my product, pull up my door, pull it out, and even though you pushed it back in, still measure from the end of the foil. That's where you last cut it. Okay, get my measurement. Okay, push it back into the foil, into the box, bring the door down, fingers out, make sure the red line is gone, reseal. You want to protect the patient from the fiberglass edges here, just grab the padding, stretch it once, twice, that protects the patient from any abrasive edges, nicely padded here. At the middle of the, the splint, I open this up, the double face tape, and right at the center seam here, I like to just go ahead and cut a little V out, just out of the center seam, half inch V, okay. I close this back down, and I'll just snip the middle of that V. Just down the middle. That gives all, both sides are protected. Okay. Pad any bony prominence, which would be the ulnar styloid, and pad between the fingers. So I'm going to loosely pad this over the ulnar styloid. Loosely. And I, I come through here once, and then I rip it off. Maybe three to four layers of padding just over the ulnar styloid. And then I'll take a smaller piece and just pad between the fourth and fifth fingers. That's all the padding I, I tend to use. Now again, it's physician's preference if they want to use more padding, but this seems to be fine. A little bit of water. Push that water through the splint, squeeze, and then remove the excess with your towel. Roll it up, squeeze the dry side of the towel. Do that a second time. And all you're doing here is just removing the excess moisture from the padding. So that's very important. Taking that V and place it right at the tip of the fifth. Okay. Come on down on the ulna side, given its name, ulna gutter splint, or sometimes referred to as the boxer splint, as we said. And just lock in your splint at the wrist again. Capture my splint. Come around through the web space. And now just capturing the fourth and fifth only. Just these two fingers should be immobilized. Okay, twice around the fingers. Try to keep that as neat as possible. That's why I'm using a two inch bandage. Get a much neater wrap through the fingers by using a two inch bandage on a small extremity. Again, pulling on the splint, relaxing on the patient. Pull, pull, relax and roll. Pull, pull, relax on the patient. Pull on the splint, pull on the splint, Relax on the patient. From the center of the splint again, palm your hands only, smooth it out. Now they want to position this patient down to at least 45 degrees of flexion at the MCP joints. Bring them down to at least 45 degrees of flexion Again, always check with the physician as far as positioning goes. But 45 will be acceptable. 
at the MCPs, and I could also see the risk come back to at least 20 degrees of extension. So what you're looking at is the COBRA position, 45 to 20, the COBRA strike position or intrinsic plus. So 45 would be acceptable. So once you have your position to maintain this position, I have to use some tape. One inch would be great, but if you don't have one inch tape, you can take some two inch and just strip it down and just place it on the dorsal side of the hand. Come over the fifth, bring that patient down to flexion and take this piece back off the dorsal side and just pull the patient back into extension. Now just to maintain that, just take a smaller piece and come around circumferentially just to hold that tape there. Now this holds your position for you. So when you leave the patient alone, they're not going to be playing with it going up and down. But before you discharge the patient, remove the tape because it is circumferential here.